in hey guys welcome to warhammer 40k imperium maledictum iron archipelago the fourth episode uh it's gonna be a short short episode less than an hour could even be as short as 40 minutes don't really have any announcements here except we should review what everyone has bought so far because there were numerous purchase attempts uh between sessions and we know that viewers love spreadsheets Especially <laughs> Warhammer 40k viewers love making lists of things. So, uh, if everyone could announce their successful and shamefully unsuccessful purchases, so we can get that out of the way. You know, speaking of people with unsuccessful purchases, let's just jump right in with you, Omar Krieg. You look like you're not ready, so that's why I want to start with no, you. No, I, sure. I, I, I was ready to answer. So I definitely a, attempted to acquire mesh, uh, vest, and boots so they would cover the chest and legs. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I did not roll very well for that. I did get the silencer, but that was common, so I don't. I didn't have to get a. I didn't have to make a roll for that. So I okay. got a second silencer for my auto pistol. And now I can just basically say that both my auto pistol and my sniper rifle have a silencer on them. And then, and then I spent some experience points too, but I boosted uh, fellowship with two advances for a total of 40 points. And then, so now my fellowship is crazy. slightly higher. Okay. <laughs> and then I boosted range combat. Interesting. Interesting. James, I know you have your list perfectly curated. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I worked out what I could buy, and I don't know if I'd actually said, okay, now that I see what, what I can buy, I, I will buy that. So the two things that I was able to find with my searches were, or well, three things, were a carapace helm, mesh gauntlets, and a fire selector. Now, the fire selector I was thinking of getting, I was thinking of buying a stub pistol, which is common, requires no um, roll for it, with, with a silencer. Uh, and the fire selector is useful if I get a different type of ammunition like manslaughter bullets. But as you said, I was criticized for being combat nun. Uh, I was more like trying to get a silence weapon because you can't silence a last pistol. But I think I'm just going to buy the mesh gauntlets and the carapace helm just to give me a little bit more protection because apparently people are going to be shooting at us now. Um, I did also spend some XP. Uh, what did I spend my XP on? I think I put up a skill. I think I bought uh, some more... I bought uh, Presence Leadership because I have a number of talents I'm interested in and they all run off Presence Leadership. Okay, that is true. Rassy, Rassy, Rassy. What do you got? Well, so I tried to buy an armor body glove. <laughs> Didn't happen. Unfortunate. Um, I did buy um photo contacts because shooting in the darkness is now no longer going to be an issue uh i also bought uh, a rebreather so i have an hour of internal air which was me collecting gear that seemed thematic for the character uh speaking of items that might not get much use but are very thematic i also bought a las cutter I like the way you say you have an hour of internal air, like you're some sort of free diver. <laughs> um, I also, uh, after some conversation and clarification about ammunition, uh, I bought five more uh, frag grenades to bring my total up to six. And I made the roll to buy four crack grenades, because why not? Because okay. you never have enough. So now, not only does Rassi have all these weapons on slings and whatnot, but now also has like bandoliers of grenades. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, and, just the only reference I could find in the book was that it says that the equipment on your roll part is what your um, patron has given you. Um, so, the, the, yeah, what, what you get from your background and your. Um, uh, origin uh, as your stuff you brought into the relationship, but the role equipment is what the rogue trader has seen fit to furnish us with. Okay. I, mean, I don't know if you said, hey, here's two grenades, use them for this. This is for your, the entirety of your uh, your career. But uh... <laughs> I think he pays you well enough that he expects that you re remun remunerate yourself. Yeah. 
You can certainly try sending your ammunition bill to your supervisor and see if yeah, it yes, is. Yes. Put it, put it, put it in an expense claim. Uh, what was it yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> <Per DM? laughs> There's a whole an... appendix for ammo expenditure whenever you submit God. for travel. That would have been such a Nero thing to be like, I need an ammunition per diem. <laughs> <laughs> I fired this many bolt rounds, rounds a day just for training. <laughs> There's a bunch of other stuff that I would like to get, but they were outside of my funding, so I didn't bother rolling for them. Okay. All right. Uh, next thing to yeah. note. So I don't have businesses work. So if you put an expense claim in for a heavy bolter, they would furnish you with a storm bolter to reduce your rate of fire. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, is it called Cyclone, where it's a four times? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah like... Oh, it, we did also, we had a lore question for you, James. Okay. The Astarte sniper rifle. Oh, bolt right. Bolt gun Silencing. or needle rifle? No, so so the, the Astarte stalker bolt rifle is what they use as snipers. And it is a, it's, it's, a, it's a stalker pattern bolt rifle, so it does fire still a bolt round. Um, but it does have a silencer, so at least it doesn't make any noise coming out of the gun. It certainly makes noise when it explodes in the target. But Kay was wondering if have... he could silence bolt weapons. No, I yeah. wasn't. Okay. <laughs> oh, Mark was curious if Kane could silence bolt weapons. That's the truth. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Because I'm th well, because I'm thinking of this, our bolt rounds are rocket propelled, are they not? Yes. Once they, they fire, are, yeah, yeah, they are. They are a um, uh, rocket propelled grenade, basically. With yeah. a, oh, sorry, yeah. they they are a rocket propelled mass reactive round. <laughs> mass reactive, i.e., this mass smacks that mass, and there's definitely well, no, a reaction. It, it, they 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 Explodes don't you can't contact. airburst them. Yeah, they explode on, yeah, yeah, explode yeah. after contact upon entry. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, hey, audience, specifically that on YouTube, but also maybe the Twitch audience. I did put commercials in the last episode. We're not going to get them here because there's no break in this episode. <laughs> I'm just curious if you enjoyed them or not, and we'll figure out, based on that commentary, whether we do it more going forward. Uh, since we are between missions, several things happen. First off is the ability to call on your three uh, Elysian drop troopers has reset. So I know you didn't use it, but if you had used it, you could call upon them again at this point. They don't stack, they don't procreate while you're not using them, so suddenly you've now got six. <laughs> I mean, if they, were real, if they were real soldiers, they'd be out there trying to procreate, I know that. <laughs> Look at that approving face. <laughs> I don't feel like answering that question. You already know the answer. <laughs> I am curious as to whether any of you would like to enter into a group endeavor which requires all of you to agree on one of the group endeavors or whether you would like to all attempt a individual endeavor to improve yourselves. Uh, this will be in a two week period uh, after you contacted a clan in a hard bottle and started receiving your first shipments from them. So they uh they have sent you a mock-up of the sort of weapons that they're going to be giving to you, and they also have included a uh, like prototype first-run copy of it, which, Tavel, with your extremely basic tech training, the machine spirits seem like they have an accent. <laughs> that makes sense. Um. So the only... Group endeavors, I think. That, so, so there's really only three, three group endeavors. There yes. is um, the campaign of whispers, yep. where you're trying to enhance your patrons' um, notoriety with a particular faction. Um, there is combat training, which just lets the group in a combat in the next mission start with one point of superiority. Um, or there is bolster defenses, which lets you basically treat your home base as having the uh, no no thy battleground um, superiority component. Um, so I, I suppose if we, were to, if we were to do a, a group encounter, not saying we are, but like, which one of those would we do? Is, is anyone particularly thinking, oh, we should do one of those ones? Uh, I, think I it, need to look at the table really. I, I mean, you know, you're not, you're not going to learn more than what I just said. It's two twenty nine. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's four I mean, paragraphs, five paragraphs. So. I feel like the one that would probably be the most applicable would be either 
combat training, but I don't feel like we're a very combat heavy oriented group or bolstered defenses. I mean, we could be if we have combat training. I mean, yeah. when, when the we only, the only tool be. you have to hammer, every problem looks like a nail. So, Look, yeah. I'm just imagining <laughs> Rassi montage the man song from Mulan. Just him <laughs> walking around saying, let's get down to business. <laughs> With his sunglasses Bell's and hair. just doing one push-up while Rassi's like on his fifth one-armed push-up. <laughs> well, if, we, if we wanted to do the campaign of Whispers, uh, Rassi would, be, would not be helpful at all. Well, it um, needs eight eight total success levels on a minus twenty rapport test. So we'd all be we'd all be rolling rapport, and we add up successes. And they but you can keep them from event to event. Like if we only get two this time, we'll get you know we can try again next time. But the problem with it is, is that um, every time there's a chance you'll screw up and you do it and actually worsen their reputation with that particular faction. Um, and I don't think that I mean I, I've got rapport at least, but I don't think either of you guys. Uh, well, actually, I think because because Valamaris is is not. Not fellowship dumps that is he? He's he I dressed know, up his I have a twenty six after putting two advances into okay, uh, fellowship. Yeah. We we both dump fellowship. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This might not, not that might not be a good idea. Can <laughs> yeah. you can you carry the water of two buffoons? Is it the question. Sounds like <laughs> your options really are combat training if you want to go on the offense, bolster defense if you want to go on the defense, or everyone will pick a individual endeavor, which are much more varied. Yeah. So, think, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I think with with the narrative being where it is and knowing that the Tunnel Snakes are supposed to be coming up to the boss's office, which mm -hmm. they rule. agreed has guards and presumably other defenses, defensive measures in place, perhaps if we did agree, clear. bolster defense would be the run to do. You have a deal with the Tunnel Snakes. Am I not correct? Like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, we okay. contact them when we have the money and they show up, but they're going to bring a bomb in case we try some tomfoolery. Mm -hmm. And personally, I'm, I would rather just wipe them out, and that may not be the best way to... That might not be the best time to do it, but that's definitely Blomers' ideas. We need to get rid of them. They're going to be a problem. Um, also, we, we get to choose two endeavors each per, Is per it? downtime. Yeah, it's two. It mm. does say so. Um, uh, carriers normally have time and resources to try to take two endeavors for missions. The GM may decide that the oh, available okay. time may permit more or fewer endeavors than normal. All right. Yeah. Where's that at? What? Uh, that's on page 229. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, under endeavors. I still haven't seen it, oh, yeah. and you've even read it out. It's right. After Given that the, multiple the people are saying it, I have to it's trust that it's middle, true. Middle yeah, of the middle first left. paragraph after the endeavor setting. Yeah. Um, oh, yep. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a stack of individual endeavors. There's things like devout prayer. There's consulting savants. Um, true. Well, we, we, if you have three contacts, you can turn them into a permanent um, uh, bonus with a consolidated influence role. Um, you can craft or commission items to be made, um, drill with a certain weapon. So I think before we get too far spread out, there is the question of, do you want to do a group endeavor? Because once we decide that, you can more easily uh, pick individual endeavors. Um, we could do a group endeavor, and we could each do an individual endeavor if you wanted yes. to. Or you yeah. each do two individuals. Yeah. I think... If we do a group, I think we're all of the time. same. I think we're all of the same mind that we would like to delete the tunnel snakes <laughs> if we have the opportunity to do it reasonably. But they rule. Well, I mean, just, just how how, how would the sister rule, way but all on kings that? stop ruling at some point. The master of mankind would like to know your location. <laughs> um, so if he doesn't rule right now, he just is a very bright light in an alternate dimension. Somebody's trying really <laughs> oh, yeah, hard I'm to give a lot of The mice. dice are not going to love me for the next 60 years. <laughs> um, um, so one thing we can consider is it's an individual um, endeavor called Scout Surroundings, um, which choose an area no larger than a void station, which we're on. 
Um, you spend your time exploring it, marking down key, key locations. It, it translates to advantage on all law and navigation yeah. tests uh, throughout the location. And that, and that could be used to try and... Because because if, if we are going to open a combat with the tunnel snakes, we want to try and do it at a time and place of our choosing. And mm -hmm. if you scout the area first, you can then claim the know, know thy environment or know, know, thy, know thy battlefield um, supremacy option. That sounds good. And there's no role required for that one. You just do it. But it's probably worth being the person that's got the best intelligence law slash navigation to, to do it, though, because they can get the most out of it. Um, let me look at Volomerus' sheet. Yeah, so that's probably, that would be good for Volomerus because you've got a good, you've got 52 in both law and navigation. Yeah, because I have, uh, those are in uh, intelligence skills, aren't they? They are indeed intelligence skills. Yeah, his intelligence is, he's kind of a nerd. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try to take that from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the only other like one. My was... my intelligence is almost the same as your fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> so, all you, buddy. <laughs> the other one I was looking at is uh, exhaustive drilling. Uh, again, there's no roll on that one. And what you do is on your next mission for one weapon, you ignore any fumbles. Now that might be a bit situational, but taking a 96 plus roll out of the equation could yeah. be helpful, especially if we know we're going into combat. The other, there was another that... combat oriented one too, which was uh, training rights. There is a weapon, or excuse me, there is a roll on that one, and it is a one time use in the next mission. If we if we do do a group endeavor, I feel like combat training would be the one we would do. Yeah, to give, to give yeah. us all the supremacy on a on a single combat in the next, in the next mean, mission. It looks like we want to go on the offensive. I believe you're. So. I believe you're using rogue trader the video game terms, James. It's superiority, not supremacy. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I just noticed that. I'm sorry. I was trying to make it funny. I'm not trying to rip on you, James. No, that's right. Sorry. Don't smite me. <laughs> Smite you. James isn't a psyker in real life, just to be clear. No, but he I, I can feel some paladin energy coming from him. <laughs> paladin of the god emperor. No, that's definitely Big Spoon for sure. <laughs> Alright, so final answer. Can I mark you down as group training, combat training? I think if we do that and we all do we do that plus one each. We care with that. Yeah, I think so. Too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. So does that mean that Omar, are you happy to do scout surroundings as your individual action? Because that means that you're you're spoken for then. Because I'm I'm happy to do it if you rather do something else. Like my skill's only forty eight, so it's only a difference of four to yours. So if you had something else you really wanted to do. Uh I was wanting to do that fumble one, the exhausted drilling. So but... drilling? Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Look, if, if I if I didn't do scouts right, I'll probably just do devout worship to try and get even more fate points. Um, oh, is that what that so... does? I hadn't looked at that one. Yeah, so Devout Worship gives you an extra fake point for the next mission, um, which will give you five, because <laughs> I've already got four. Um, nice. So, but I think that if you if you want to do, like, you're talking about something else, I, I will do Scout Surroundings. Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll move them on the for that two weeks. You know what? You know? you know what, James? Actually, I feel like, now that I think about it a little bit, as much as Valamus would want to do that exhaustive training, he definitely would be into the whole looking around his area. Okay. Knowing his area, that definitely falls more in character than the pistol. Maybe next time he could do the pistol. Because the other one I was I was looking at for myself was consult savant, um, where you can go and you know consult an expert in their field. But I was trying to work out what what I would consult a savant on. Because um, that, that I'd like to in... ask someone a question. I just don't know what the question is. <laughs> well, there's things we want to know. What do we want to know the most? You know, it would probably something to do with the stuff we're trying to sell slash buy. So I have a so next episode I will have. Kane, you got any individual endeavor thoughts? Well, given that uh, Rassi is the combat monkey and combat monkeys require gear. A lot of it. Uh, I was thinking of pulling some extra shifts helping out other uh, other groups 
maybe provide some labor help for extra income. Okay. What skill or specialization that you are skilled in would you like to try to generate funds with? I believe I would like to... I think I would like to help out with... I can either do marksmanship training, um, sort of do like a marksmanship refresher with the guards and anybody else, any uh, like anybody of the other staff who'd like some firearms training. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Do you have specialization in that or is it just a skill? Uh, I have specialization in long guns and ordnance. Okay. I think ordnance is probably going to be more relevant to getting the guards up to speed on different ammunition types. Okay. Use of uh, long range guns inside of a dense urban area is not recommended. But long guns is just two handed guns. Right. So there's a lot of short range shotguns around here. I would also note that anything that could damage the walls of the local area makes locals very nervous, given the fact that you're inside a giant sealed asteroid. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh, I, I will give I will give them ordinance training. So I think what happens is you know you meet up with uh, the the chief of. The work crews, Chief Tyrrell from the vault, uh, some of the people that you met from the motor pool. You even see Dr. Yiannopoulos show up a couple of times during the week in order to, to test um, like pistols training with las guns. Uh, and she's constantly doing that thing where instead of doing the safety, she's doing the magazine and just dropping the whole <laughs> mag at the bottom of the gun. So I'd like you to make a plus zero challenging marksmanship tests with ordinance specialization. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I reroll that? You can fate that for sure. Yeah. That's bad. Okay. So you'll earn... Uh, 150 for 450, success? yeah. Because it's so multiplied just... by your SLs. Yeah. Somebody cuts you a check for, you know, like, by order of the rogue trader, additional job trading uh, uh, grant money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what we called it in engineering. Uh, they definitely make sure to cut you from, from a grant that the rogue trader has left behind for personal improvement. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, it's two weeks. It's a pretty sweet deal for you. You do combat training with your group, and uh, then you, in between that, you spend most of your time teaching people to keep their ammo inside their gun and point it in the correct direction. Uh, your time is basically filled with the smell of gun smoke and the crispy, crispy smell of las gun circuits being fried <laughs> i have to assume that las guns smell like ozone 100 percent they the do 100 yeah. they, it's oh, in, the, okay. in the texas right, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was making that guess but all right good good yeah. good uh palamras you're yeah. doing these scout surroundings correct we see cuts of you weaving throughout cites beta cites delta just a man attempting to blend in, ignoring the fact that he's being tracked at all times by a floating servo skull. But no one seems to pay very much attention to you or the servo skull. You started swapping out pieces of equipment and uh, clothing to blend in with the locals. You've got yeah. the walk down, the hunch, no eye contact. Uh, you don't say hello to people here. You don't act like they know you. <laughs> You've fully integrated yourself in the new york city attitude that state of mind <laughs> of people around you you're not you're not back on a forge world where at the very least someone might blast a hello in binaric towards you people <laughs> have places to go and things there. to do here <laughs> you've also started picking up some of the slang and in the process you're you know occasionally you pull up to a parking garage or someplace high and pull out maybe a little electro binocular, some sort of vision enhancement, and just check areas out. Start getting an idea for blind spots. 
I feel like he's I have a data slate, so I'm probably getting some like um the only word I can think of off the top of my head is like sector sketch, but like just little range fans and things of that nature from various points. Sure. Target reference points. You get full artillery coordinates using the new US military system. <laughs> the military grid reference system. Yeah. <laughs> Converted for, of course, you know, interstitial travel. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's the Imperium, so it has to be converted to metric. <laughs> well, no, the MGRS already is in metric. Yes, I know. It is. It, no, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's imperial. It's converted, to, it's converted to Imperium, you know, so it's like things yeah. to say. Like, it's like, and literally, one of the, in one of the books, one of the Road Trader books, it refers to a the, the opening of a building being two blade blades wide. So obviously, you. <laughs> <laughs> How many giraffes is that? Wide, I wonder. How many giraffe widths is that? I'm just imagining somebody describing how well made their mono blade is, but everything is in the reference of Bane blades. <laughs> it, it was one, one quarter the sharpness of a Bane, Bane blades forward spikes. <laughs> it's the best goddamn blade I'd ever seen. Holly, what were you undertaking? I so think I think I'm going to go for I'm going to go for devout worship. I think that um, okay. I think that you know I'm going to spend my time. So I guess my first question is, with my air of authority trait, is this my first time meeting the Grand Emperor? Uh, that's a joke. Uh, no, I'm just going to go and roll my law. Um, <laughs> theology. It didn't register right away what you had they just called, said. They, they <laughs> called your organization the Brides of the Emperor, so I'm going to go ahead and say a solid no on that one. <laughs> All right, I did succeed. So my fate point total is increased by one for the next mission. You spend time at the local places of faith learning about the imperial cult you are part of several local ceremonies that celebrate the conquests of lord solar macarius these have unusual importance here on the iron archipelago because macarius's crusade stopped before it reached the archipelago the archipelago is one of very few worlds because it's not a world that were conquered after the end of the crusade. So they hold several ceremonies about Macarian's vision, Macarius's dream, that celebrate the fact that a space hulk appeared, it was discovered, its location was void anchored, and now people transit here. It How long it will stay, not clear. You know, it's been over a thousand years. It could leave at any time. And when it does, that's basically going to be it for the local economy. And there are some questions whether you'll actually be able to, whatever it's called with the Gellar field, transition without its gravity field holding everything in place. In the process, you hear about a split in the local imperial cult. There is the official ecclesiarchical chain of command, which, of course, you can, but don't necessarily have to, answer to. You have your mission here, which is to get that marriage. You gotta, you gotta get that man married as soon as possible before you go home. If you want to go home afterwards. Uh, but on top of that, there is a local preacher by the name of Father Firebrand. And when... Why is that funny? I'm easily amused. Please continue. Okay. You... <laughs> it's not open battle like two people with chain swords clashing in front. But there are adherents of Father Firebrand who are engaged in uh, religious theological combat with adherents of the official imperial and cult out front of the building with Firebrand's people trying to convince people, not that the official imperial cult is wrong, but that Father Firebrand offers a new and diverse vision uh, that represents a more clear path forward for the Iron Archipelago. There's nothing wrong with the official imperial cult, but Father Firebrand is a entrepreneur, he's a visionary, he's a happening guy, and his message speaks 
to the youth. And if you get in now, if you get in early, you'll find yourself in a higher position than if you came in later. Because his organization builds in tiers from the bottom up. And when they introduce a new tier group of people, they lift all of the previous groups up with a wider platform in a sort of ziggurat structure. Yeah, that sounds a lot like a Necron monolith. <laughs> hey, you tell somebody that, you're going to get shot. <laughs> uh, so I have two questions for you. Yeah. Um, during my, my initial scene on Macaria, um, I had a debate regarding the decree passive and the Fraturus militia. Yeah. It, does that movement seem to have spread to... Is, is it part of the same movement, or is it... Is this a separate I mean, the Fraturus militia is different everywhere, but there's always yeah. people who want to join up and do what they can for the God Emperor. Okay. This guy <laughs> doesn't strictly sound like he's part of the Fraturus militia, but you could you could easily envision him encouraging people to give up yeah. their worldly possessions before joining the Fraterus militia. The other question I'm going to have is, in the actual fluff of 40k, post the um, the, the crusade with Gulliman came back, the Ecclesiarch has rescinded the decree passive and allowed the formation of Fraterus, like official Fraterus militia again. So I haven't that spread, got that in my notes. Okay, is that, is that spread? It, it may not have spread this Let's far. Let's say in the it hasn't yet. spread to this sector yet. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> There's that whole yeah. Cicatrix maledictum thing's been slowing down the news. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Father Firebrand, not a Fraterus militia, not an armed organization, just a sort of cult offshoot that's very enthusiastic about certain things, yeah, especially they... fire based ones. Yeah, so they, they like flamers, you know. The, yeah. the, the Imperial Law lets you own flamers. You should be able to enjoy your flamers. You're starting to get it. <laughs> he also believes a lot in sacrifice in the name of God Emperor, specifically yeah. sacrifice to the church through yeah. his his personage. Okay. I think that um, he literally this is this, this is a brand. person I. This is a person I want to spend some more time reading, but I don't know whether you want it to be part of downtime or part of like the actual well the role play action. What we're bit. gonna do is now I'm gonna have everybody roll a D one hundred and we'll see what event happens to you Ooh, during the, the downtime. But yes. in the process, you through I, I know we didn't cover a lot of it. You participate in these ceremonies as a official adherent of the Imperial cult, and you feel a sense of destiny come over you that you strongly know your vision for the way forward. Which must be nice as someone who doesn't have any vision for the way forward. Omar, an 87, huh? Yeah. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. Well, Can I well, just say, I, do, I have a vision for the next quarter, AP. Okay, great. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad someone does. Uh, where's the C100 guy? Kane's got his quarterly training slides going. Oh, well, uh, Omar, <laughs> I, I, did you want to, want to yeah, do Omar? Yeah, I want, them all, I want them all, and then I'll figure out okay. if we can merge them into one event or if we're uh, just going to do individual Omar. scenes as, right. uh, as a result. James with a 32. Oh, boy, James. Oh, boy. Okay. We're having a good time. You're it's, not. Yeah, this is, <laughs> these will not be combined scenes for sure. Yeah. I don't know. My, uh, mine and Kane's might be. Right, depending on how it breaks yeah. down. I mean, we probably went together for the, for ours because we have the same thing. <laughs> okay, so the first scene that happens is as Valamorous and Rassi. I don't know whether you both want to go together or whether you both coincidentally ended up in the same place. Coincidentally, I think it'd be I think it'd be based on where we're going. You are actually going to the ceremonies that Holly is participating in as an adherent. Oh, that definitely fits for Valamorous. He probably wouldn't even. He might have mentioned it to Rassi, but not necessarily invited. Like, hey, I'm going over there, blah, 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 blah. And then if Rassi changes his mind and then later it shows up or whatever. Lamarus is pretty faithful for the most part. Yeah, I think when you, <laughs> you mention it and you're like, hey, I'm going to go. You want to go? Rassi's like, well, good for you. And then just, <laughs> just goes on his own. <laughs> the two of you meet up and you see Holly participating as part of the brazier swinging and the chanting 
there's a lot here about Lord Solar Macarius's dream and vision. Um, there's nothing that's like uh, humanity's bad for not following him. It's more like there will come a new Macarius, someone with his vision as our war master once more. And when that happens, humanity will be tested again. The Halo Stars will be ours. The God Emperor has said so. And we must forge the impurities from ourselves, so that when our steel is tested, we do not fail again. We live for the dream of Lord Solar Macarius to rise once more. Uh, so there's a lot of, like, swords being passed around. There's a lot of, like, they have a mobile forge, like a bunch of servitors are carrying a palaquin that's really just a forge of a dude like folding metal over and over uh, as a symbolic representation of humanity having all of the impurities pounded out of it. And there's a lot of passing around of sacred alcohol so that people can feel good. Uh, it's also loaded up with a fuck ton of drugs. <laughs> If you guys if you guys participate in imbibe, you can ignore fatigue to next time you get the fatigue condition because you had such a great time at this victory ceremony. I think Valamus would definitely uh So Valamus thinks that anytime there's a challenge, it's put in front of him specifically for him to um earn the right for the god emperor's light to fall on him. Like each time he has to prove that he's worth it. And I really hope I didn't just freeze because it looks like I did. <laughs> nope. No, you're good. Nope. Okay. We're okay. just staring at you intensely. Yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so yeah, so like this is so it, you know, every time there's a challenge, that test is specifically there to reinforce whether or not he is worthy in the eyes of uh the god emperor. And so when this dude is talking about banging out the impurities and that eventually mankind will be tested again, the Halo Stars will be ours, Velamris is it. Um He's not obviously not a member of the clergy in any way, uh, any stretch of the imagination, but he's definitely in. So he'll be imbibing, not necessarily to excess, but certainly for, you know, he'll definitely drink the blood and eat the body or whatever the hell it is. The trans That's trans definitely not what it is. This is, <laughs> no, like, I know. I know this is not the not sacraments it. of transubstantiation, <laughs> my friend. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> but yeah, he's definitely in. You know, he'll definitely drink when the toast is called for and whatever else yeah, absolutely. he's also they looking at his hand that shit up with a fuck ton of combat drugs that remove your ability to fear fear uh, that 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 is amazing because now <laughs> Valamus is just going to believe that the god emperor definitely shown his light and he's like all right you I'm can see somebody in. next to you it's like should my hands feel warm my eyes are itching <laughs> i am not afraid this is the least anxious i've ever been Woo! god emperor Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I think he starts <laughs> walking in a circle, shaking his hands. I mean, this is this, there's this is an official this this is an official event by by official people at an official time. Rassy's gonna imbibe. Are you covered with weapons and grenades as you do it? <laughs> he always is. Okay, yeah. The, the priest who leans down to hand this to you says, "Use caution, my son. Use caution." This is the strong stuff. And then he anoints a little bit on your forehead before handing you a little silvery tin mug filled with the liquid. It's kind of got an oily sheen. It's a little murky. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take, take the mug and then just adjust the shades and drink it. <laughs> perfect. So perfect. I love it. I love it, James. The emotional support grenades. <laughs> <laughs> There's always got to be that guy in the Warhammer 40k campaigns, for sure. That's just like, I'm never going anywhere without a shit ton of weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> absolute lunatic. The chainsword, the two long guns, ten grenades. Yeah. Is there a way for Verlamers to acquire one of these swords? Now, I'm not saying steal it. Like, a legitimately, a, Whatever the swords were that they're forging and passing around. Oh, they're not they're not passing around. They're forging a single sword that is represent uh, okay. and it's not it's, it's they're not forging a sword, they're forging metal. Gotcha. Okay. They're they're you said, performing I, I thought you said something. There's no blade involved. They are forging a piece of metal and then they're folding it to get the impurities out and just yep, continuously yep. reforging it. I thought you had said something about swords being passed around. Maybe I misheard you. No, no, no. It's the drinks. They're passing drinks around. 
Oh, definitely did not mishear that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Polly, I have really bad news for you. Yeah. <laughs> As a result of the riots that are about to happen, you lose two uh, success levels, which means you actually don't get your... Well, it take, takes me to minus one. I'll spend a fake point to add one degree, which takes me to plus zero. So bingo, it's still a bingo. Got it. Great, because you're not going to have much time to do much else. So it's a great time <laughs> to spend a fake point. So what happens is at the end of it, um, after Rassi and Valamris have left, you're part of you know the cleanup crew that's helping wipe down the servitors and make sure that they get back to their place uh somebody's got to like carry the exhausted blacksmith who's been forging for like 12 hours straight who's been hyped up on all these combat drugs as well um and he's like coming down from a high uh there is again i don't want to say it is a physical attack it is a theological attack by the forces of father firebrand who show up and they just start screaming like someone has declared that father firebrand could be looked after for heresy this is an outrage this is an outrage i echo the words of father firebrand blood for the god emperor skulls for the golden throne and then all of his adherents begin saying that over and over again while pumping uh, themselves up and there are more of them. There are a lot. There's like six of them for every one of your people. They begin surrounding all of the ecclesiarchal personnel and are just doing Daniel Bryan yes while screaming <laughs> blood for the god emperor, yeah. skulls for the skull throne. Can, can, I, can I say that exact line appears in the Road Trader computer game? <laughs> okay. I haven't played it, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sid by a Road Trader. Oh, I see. I so I'm pretty sure I saw it in a uh YouTube comic meme where someone was like uh a dial that was like heretical or not, and that one was like, ooh, almost over the line, but not quite. <laughs> I've seen that one once or twice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, they're not adherents of corn. That that not heretical, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't gone over the line. Um, no, we can't. We can't kill them until they go over the line. After about twenty minutes of this, you start hearing the distinctive crack of Adeptus uh, Arbites riot control shotguns, and you start seeing clouds of uh, gas appear in the in the area around the festival. And you yourself are just, you know, knocked down in the pursuing panic. You're briefly detained, but not arrested by the Arbites while they investigate your identity. Although. Your staff of office clears that up pretty quickly. Uh, and there are a lot of arrests. There is a lot of anger as a result of this event. Uh, and it's confusing because no one's really sure who's right or wrong about this. No one knows who declared that Father Firebrand could be investigated as a heretic. As far as the official church position is, he is, you know, privately annoying, but nothing he says is heretical in any way no one's opening an investigation into him so they're not sure where they got this idea so so i'd like to offer to the arbitrators that you know i'm obviously a member of the ministerium without being a member of the ministerium here yeah. that you know I, I i would be interested in looking into more about this father for Ibrand. i can obviously open my my office opens a few doors that wouldn't necessarily be open to them without being kicked in first and it's something that I'll, I'll take on to have a look into this. Listen, if you're offering to be an undercover contact for me, absolutely, I'll sign you up. Come on, come on. I'm not gonna, not gonna pay you. I'm a CI. No worries, I'm a CI. Yeah, you're a CI. We're not gonna pay you for your information, <laughs> but yeah, That's absolutely. Yeah. Want a low stick? No, no, thank you. Okay, we'll just get you well, a. But, oh, but I, but I, I would accept a uh, a contact. Oh, you, you got me, James. You got me. Uh, all right, this is Detective Decker, D-E-K-K-E-R, and you can also roll because it's the first time you've met with him. Totally not a Blade Runner reference. Uh, so references on so this so channel. Of, like, I know, right? <laughs> I, I missed the live the live Blade Runner show this week to pay my to run my session zero for Star Wars. They were doing um, a Blade Runner in, at IMAX with a live orchestra playing the music. Mm. Sick. Yeah. Uh, so I need to make it as a um, presence or report test. So get this. So let's go with 
presence. I'm gonna have to look up the the ranks of the arbitrators. I feel like detective must be one, but yeah, or just arbitrator, arbitrators. Okay, because like no, yeah. Nope. Um. All right. I just will kind of like spend a, I'll oh, spend here a it is. The fate point, point, of course, <laughs> to, to, to bring it to a plus zero, which means I then get to do. Uh, it, it means I get plus one in all SL with in for the yes. rest of this encounter. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. <clears throat> you uh, are undercover with. Hold on, Warhammer 40k RK's ranks. Probably supposed to be like arbitrators uh, organization. Let's see here. Trooper regulator. He's investigator. Decker. He, he gets a trench coat and a stub yeah. revolver. <clears throat> I want to say yeah. he basically looks like young Harrison Ford. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Star Wars. No. Yesterday on Reddit, someone posted Harrison Ford's uh, high school yearbook. That's what Decker looks like. <laughs> Investigator Decker. Any closing actions or thoughts you'd like to take up before we wrap up this, the in-between episode? I would like to do, I'm not sure what skill, probably some sort of lore or something, but uh, Valamras is curious. So Rassi has been giving him a little bit of shit semi-passive aggressively about an Imperial Guard regiment disappearing, paperwork not being filled. Oh, filed we're going to have this conversation? No, what I would like to do is research. I want to see if Alamras can figure it out, piece it together. What happened? Where was the mistake made? Where was the inaction that was made? What caused the 143rd to effectively disappear? Okay. And be able to track down what went wrong in order to attempt to rectify it with Rassi somehow. I'll take a logic investigation roll. Don't know if I have investigation, but I definitely have logic because that's yeah. No, I have logic. So, well, but that's we'll fine because it's... this will uh, require you to go in person to the administratum offices. That's awesome because what that will allow me now is I can use Data Delver, which okay. will give me advantage if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that sounds let me, right. Let me double check. But there's no other way to get this information besides there. Yeah, I do have an advantage on testmate to find or retrieve information from a document or archive. Okay. It takes half the time it would normally take. Uh, well, uh, reversing that, a... you have a seven, right? Correct. Okay, that is a success with a lot of... Uh, a lot of extra successes. Yeah, that's going to give you four degrees of success? Is that how that works? 52 minus seven. Well, it's, it's based on five. it's based on the tens, tens. digit difference. The tens are right, yeah. Okay, then so. yeah, it's five degrees of success then. Okay. Uh, so it's basically the best possible success you could get. So basically, what I'm hearing is, and you by all means tell me if I'm crazy, but I'm basically finding out everything I'm looking for. Where where was the 140, 143rd supposed to go? Who sent them? Where did the paperwork or whatever? What was the mistake that caused them to disappear? And who is responsible for that mistake? What and what kind of mis like um, intentional or just ineptitude? You start pulling things together. Uh, names start locking into place. I imagine that there is a sort of uh, Vivaldi-esque track playing over top as we see you like going through a filing cabinet and just like pulling things out over and over again <laughs> frustratedly like throwing Gandalfing. something on a desk and papers are all over the place <laughs> then we see you in a break room that's watching um a water cooler that is covered with like two wings coming off of it two like gilded wings and has a little skull on the top and you just watch the air bubble go up in it and then you just go <laughs> you go insane you start kicking it over and over again you're like ah! <laughs> as you're looking around and then you slam your hand down on the on your desk in another scene it's been a full week of investigating and this is partially your fault not just all of these mix up with the orders but you have been doing some of the work for your boss administratum ordinate barnum and hovler 
And based on what you're seeing here, you couldn't prove it in a court of law in a way that matters to anyone that matters. But it does appear that you can piece together a line of contacts train uh, that create a train of contact between Lord Colonel Renard, who is the commander of the local Imperial Guard Regiment here on the uh, Iron Archipelago, directly back to both the Magos of your home world and to Barnum and Hoveler. And as a result of the 143rd being lost, all of their ammunition, expenditures, funding, all of their Elysium drop trooper kits, like the jetpacks and such, were all mm -hmm. folded into Renard's unit, which allowed him to form a new company within his regiment and give him sorely needed financial boost to keep his unit running. So just to make sure I'm hearing it right, in the and short you version... Were, you did work for Barnum & Hoveler that you're yeah, now yeah. recognizing was part of the, like, oh, the 143rd has been lost. We haven't heard yeah. from them. Uh, part yeah. of that and this was, was all in, everything in involving Rassi asking for backup was continuously sent to you because your boss thought you weren't competent enough to solve the problem, which, in fact, is exactly what happened. And this was so what it sounded like is this was all intentional in order to pad the pockets, the treasuries, the supplies for the Lord, Lord Colonel Renard of the local Thank Imperial you. Guard Regiment. Ronaldo. Yeah. Okay. So all right, yeah. All I'm gonna the, put all the one forty thirds uh supplies have been sent to Cite's Alpha, which is the Space Hulk, where the Imperial yeah. Guard Regiment has a beachhead there. Okay. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to gather whatever doc or copies of documents I can acquire to put this together. I'm going to put it in a book or something. Keep it secret, keep it safe, because I was totally picturing I definitely Gandalf I'm going to need you to make a stealth roll in order to steal stuff from... Your... Well, no, I don't, I'm not... Well, so my intent isn't necessarily to steal it. Mm -hmm. It's to make copies of whatever I can make copies of sure. and whatever I can I legally see. walk out with. Yeah. Okay, well, that's nothing. You can't legally walk out with any okay. of these documents. But if you All want right. to make Let copies, me see what these numbers I are. need a stealth <laughs> roll. Uh, can I use hide? Uh, or is that specifically for me hiding and not so much sneaking shit off? Is there a stealth skill? There's stealth, and then hide is a specialization. Yes. But I think you hide is for you, me to hide. I you can use hide as part of this. Okay. Because I'm definitely, if I'm not legally able to take anything, I want to be able to show proof to um, Rassi. But also, if there's a bigger conspiracy, I'm going to want to find more. Because I have a conspiracy board. And now I have a new reason for a conspiracy board. It's real. And that also is a failure. It's a can it's I, real. It's in my mind. Can I argue I have advantage on this as well as it's related to my data delving? No. Or under that... no circumstances. <laughs> Would you like to spend a fate point to re-roll? I will spend a fate point. Okay. That's like having advantage, but worse. <laughs> I mean, you, no, can spend is... you, can, you can spend fate to get advantage on a roll before you roll. Well, it's uh, way too late to do that. It's too late He's now. I again. wish I'd caught that. Because <laughs> I definitely failed again. And I may end up in jail and may need to use my one not free phone call <laughs> i am going to tell you as audience members what happens so valamorous you begin making copies i assume this is not you going to a photocopy machine right you like hastily take down notes you put a thin sheet of paper over top of the official document and you literally trace copies of people's signatures and such out you get whatever it takes you take little pick thief captures of things and you put it all in a little bag. And the whole time, you're, of course, being watched by our little service skull friend from the Inquisition, which mm -hmm. you've already been given full pardon for any of your actions, mm -hmm. as long as it relates to the rogue traders business. Mm -hmm. That said, unbeknownst to you, several of the scribes here are not idiots and notice what you're doing and simply start making notes. And they report back to their ordinate who pulls out a tobacco and is smoking and he says so looks like our local undercover agent has gone native he's off mission it's 
time to talk to Hoveler. Looks like there's a conspiracy brewing beneath us. And that's where we're going to end our episode. Is with the Lamorous Quineal now under investigation for treason. Hey, great times, guys. Go ahead and take 10 experience points. <laughs> uh... Hey, listen. At least it's treason and not heresy. <laughs> Is it Bill... treason if you're betraying the administratum in service of a rogue trader? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, it's still not arguable. It's the uh, I, is, is it treason if yes? Oh, okay. That's they it. got he's, him. He's, Inquisition's <laughs> breaking down his front door. He's done. Yeah. This, well, this is where it's... we learned that, that, uh, that Arthur spots, you know, bad players. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what, James? You could say I do swap bad players, which is why I've never swatted anyone. I just remember the name. Do you remember, do you remember that toy you used to, be able to get that was like you had a pen on like this weird construction, and you could then trace something that would copy it for you. It was it was like a, like a series of like metal arms, and you'd put a regular pen in it, and you'd have like a pin on it, and you could like trace any picture, and oh, the pen would then yes, yes, a, yeah, 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 a sketch, a sketchograph. I was remember the name of it. That's what yes. it was called, a sketchograph. I was imagining uh, Valamara say with a sketchograph trying to like you know yeah, yeah. copy the. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a short episode, friends, and it was a between episode. And next time, we're going to kick off with a discussion on product design uh, as you get some of the early first-run copies of these uh, pattern rifles from your friends Ken Hardbottle, uh, who, you know, are in the process of starting to manufacture and mass-produce all the goods you need for one of your various goals. Well, we lost Omar again, so let's do some closing <laughs> thoughts from the two of you, if you have anything you'd like to add. Uh, I, I, let's see. I, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how horribly bad uh, this administratum nonsense gets. Yes. I also like how uh, Holly now has... I mean, aside from uh, working her way to getting a contact, but also has more stuff to do in the future. Um, Rassi didn't. Rassi taught people not to hurt themselves. <laughs> There's definitely a scene, a montage, a post-episode montage of Yiannopoulos, like full 14 scenes of her magazine falls out of the gun, and then on day 14... <laughs> She successfully fires her last gun for the first time. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And then she starts sweeping the gun over. <laughs> like, everybody, someone just takes the gun from her hand. It's like, you're good. You're good now. You've qualified. Minimum basic qualification. Never touch a gun again. <laughs> I, I feel I, like I, it's I, I've been, I've been <laughs> in, that qualification, in that qualification test, definitely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I feel like Rassi's there. It's the one who like, grabs the, the, the pistol and just puts a hand on her shoulder. Well done. You, you've made so much progress. First time I used a firearm, it was a revolver, and I accidentally swept it over a group of people, and it was Boy Scouts. So like two people jumped at me, and we're like, "Don't move! Don't panic! But don't move! Just put your arm down, remain calm." I never made that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> never. Oh, all I can say is regarding. Um, the Lamorous situation is thought for the day to err is to invoke retribution. Wow. And I think that's what we're going to see. <laughs> I mean, is it corruption if the 143rd technically only had like eight members left to say that they were destroyed? Or was this a efficient redistribution of goods is the conversation I think you might want to prepare yourself for. I mean, they don't call him Lord Colonel because he's easy to defeat in litigation. Yeah. You're about to become a rounding error, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be I good mean they are the rounding era. He, they, they're, yeah. they're officially listed as dead. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. 
so then they're not so dead. But you know what? It's easy just to leave them as dead and not to change the paperwork. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it could uh, it could it could make some changes in team dynamics if Rassi has someone else to be mad at. <laughs> sure, sure. Did did I, did, did, oh, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. Are we still live? We yeah, are still yeah, live for the moment. Uh, so the short version: my cat, which has in the several months that I've owned him, has had one seizure previously, and then, but my son wasn't around for it. Well, we can change that statistic now. Okay. <laughs> And it happened right on my son's bed as he was chilling in his room, doing whatever it is that 10 year olds do when they're in, in the room by themselves with a cat. So he freaked out, arguably. Can't blame him one bit. I, it freaked me out the first time it happened, let alone just now. So, but everybody's fine. Cats, the cat will be fine shortly. Okay. I do like, I, I do appreciate the Adeptus Arbitace showing up at my place though. That was, that was funny. <laughs> F's in chat for the cat. It's not dead. No, that's fine. <laughs> He's a, a, unfortunately, like, as it was explained to me, oh, well, we're getting way off topic, but as it was explained to me, the only thing I can really do is just let it let it happen, let it run its course, and then after that, it's just clean up whatever mess there may be. Any closing so. thoughts about this episode from you, Omar Greek? Uh, it was good. I don't know if I'm going to end up in jail or not, but at least there'll be one more conversation had before that happens or before, you know. Terrible things happen, I guess. I don't know. That's yeah, right. If you if you end up in jail, we'll we'll get you out in thirty to life. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like you're getting him out. That just sounds oh. like you're waiting. <laughs> yeah. it's so Buddhist of you. That's it. <laughs> we'll definitely write a very strongly worded letter to the to the prison administration. <laughs> The prison administration go. are going to tell you, well, this man was arrested by the Adeptus Administratum, so you need to reroute your letter to the following mailbox. I'm not going to read the response. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how activism works. <laughs> writing more letters. Wow, Grimdark James, what a cruel and cutting condemnation of modern activism. <laughs> read the response. Read a Thornbrig in tears. All right, that's that's it. Oh my God, Greta Thornburg in Warhammer 40k. <laughs> okay, that's a job for mid journey. I'm off there now. <laughs> okay, we'll be back next week. Yep. Yes. Great. Yeah. You could tell I was asking a question because I did the raise at the end. <laughs> what is that? The ending screen? No. Who turned that on? No. Wait. No. I'm not done talking.